Experiencing God, we're on page number 53. We will look at 53 and 54 on tonight. 53 and 54. We're still talking about the right relationship with God, creating a love relationship with God. We want to create a love relationship with God because God is looking to create a love relationship with us. Isn't that pretty amazing? Yes. 
the God that we serve is looking forward to creating a love relationship with us. Amen. He wants to get to know him and he wants to get to know us. Amen. And he wants to have unity one to the other. Us with him and us with other people. Amen. 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 Because if we have a love relationship with him, we can easily have a love relationship with others. That's right. We talked about four types of love on last week. What are those four types of love? Four types of love. What are those four types of love we talked about on last week? Number one, who's talking? Eros. Eros love. Eros. Eros. What is Eros type of love? Eros or Eros. What is Eros type of love? What is what is that Eros? Love between a man and a woman. Love between a man and a woman. Love between a man and a woman. Eros type of love. Everybody agree? Describe more what Eros love is all about. What is Eros? Handholding. Hand Handholding. Right. Anybody else? Yes. Y'all ain't ever been in love. <laughs> or you just don't want to tell me you've been in love. You in love right now and won't tell me. Yeah, yeah. What's Eros type of love? Man, man and woman. Man and woman. What else? We got two things, man and woman, then we got holding hands, and then we got man and woman again. What's Y'all scared of that type of love? Intimacy huh? between a man and a woman. Say again? Intimacy between a man and a Intimacy woman. Intimacy between a man and a woman. What is love? We're talking about Eros type of love. What is love? What is what is love? The mouth says intimacy. Caring. 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 Yellow's type of love. Okay, let me get off that one. Y'all afraid to tap that one. Y'all don't want to mess with that one tonight. The moment the benediction is over, then you want to talk about it. Yeah. What's another type of love? Stargaze. Stargaze type of love. Stargaze. Stargaze type of love. What is Stargaze type of love? On Family Feud, Steve Arnold would say, you're asking me, I'm telling you. <laughs> Starting type of love is the love that family have among each other. It is the love that we have for family. I, I said to you on last week, sometimes we can, um, we can uh, see people mess with other folk in our family, but we can't stand for those folks to mess with them, but we can mess with them, yes? We can mess with folk, but we, we don't want anybody else to mess with our folk. This is family type of love. It is a love that man, men have for men in their family, women have for women in their family, women have for men in their family. It is the love that makes a mother go beyond, the love that makes a dad go and seek better things for their children. And it ought to be a love that makes children go beyond. For their parents. Yep. It seems to be one sided sometimes. Yes? Yes, that's right. So we need to make sure that we understand that Stargate type of love goes both ways. It ought to go both ways. It ought to be a type of love that everybody in the family has for everybody in the family. You can talk about your family members, but I can't. Right. It's because we have that special type of bond, that, that family type of love. What's the number? Agape. Agape love. What is agape love? Agape. Agape love. First of all, agape love is the love that God has for mankind. Yes? Yes. And it is an unconditional love. Yeah. It's a love that God has for us even when we're messing up. God yet loves us. The Bible says, the Bible says very plainly and very clearly to us that while we were in the thick of sin, while we were yet in sin, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, While we were still messing up, Jesus gave his love for us because God commended his love for us and that he gave his son and his son gave his life. It is a godly love. It's unconditional. It, it's, it's the fact that God will love us anyhow. Now that doesn't say that we ought to take advantage of God's love. But God loves us in spite of us. He just really, really loves us. 
He's God. What's the fourth type of love? There's a fourth Filio. type of love. Filio. Filia or filio type of love. This is the type of love where it is known as brotherly love. It is where we get the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It is filia or filio type of love. We get this, this uh, city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, from this type of love. And that's why you hear people say, I'm from the city of love. I'm from the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It is love that people have for each other, even though they are not born of the same mother, they have brotherly love. That's why you hear men, women, boys, and girls say, this is my brother from another mother. This is my sister from another mother. Because they get to a point where they are so united. They are so together. I got your back and you got mine. We are just really friends that we're brothers. Yes? yes, we are brothers. Yes. I wonder if the crime is is uh, not as high. Okay, in we, we didn't hear that. I said, I wonder if the crime is uh, less in Philadelphia. I haven't checked really. <laughs> I, I would no, like to I check it. <laughs> if it's a city of brotherly love, you're right. It ought to be a love type of relationship. So much so until men don't kill each other, that crime ought not be so high there. But I don't think they're holding true to the name. I haven't checked lately, but last time I checked, they weren't holding true to the name. When you look in the great United States of America, I don't see many cities, towns, or country holding to this brotherly love concept. We got to get to a point where we hold true to brotherly love, where we don't hate people, we don't shoot people for no apparent reason, we don't talk bad about people, we don't misuse people because this is my brother. It is the picture of one carrying another man on his back that's been injured. And he's laying crossways on his back. And he's carrying him. Mm -hmm. And the slogan is, he's not heavy. He's my brother. Mm -hmm. He's not heavy. He's my brother. In other words, I really, really, really love this guy. I love him. Mm -hmm. Last week, we, we talked about this love relationship. And you gave me all your favorite scriptures and all of them pointing back to God and his love for us. And these are scriptures that we read when we're down and out or when things are going on in our lives that we cannot control. We talked about that last week. So I'm gonna begin at the first main paragraph in the middle of the page on page 53. The verse, the verse is uh, Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6 in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 and 5. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5. I'm reading from, from the book. I don't know which, what uh, passage, what uh, version he says. But it says, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. What did he just say? Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There is no God like our God, and he is only one God. There is nobody like our God, and he's one God. Um, we, we have people that serve several gods. Polytheism is the worship of several gods. Poly, the word poly means many. So there are many people who worship several gods. They, are, they worship several gods. But I'm telling you tonight that, that Deuteronomy, Moses got it right in Deuteronomy 6 when he says, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He is the only living and true God. All the rest of those gods, they are animated. You have to help them alone. You have to beg on them. You bow down to them and they can't feel you. They got hands and can't touch. They got feet and can't walk. You got to aid these gods. But the God we serve is God, one God, and the God we serve 
is a true and living God. We, he doesn't look to us for aid. He looked to aid us. Woo, good God Almighty. Our God does not look to us for aid. He looks to aid us. That's why we need a good, loving relationship with him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all everything with all that's within you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your innermost being, your affection, your intelligence, with all your soul, your might, and with all your strength. Some versions say love the Lord your God with all your might, some say with strength. The fact is we got to love the Lord and we got to love him with everything. What is the indicator, the indicator that you love the Lord? How does one indicate to others that you love the Lord? Wow. Sister Dave, Sister Woods. Who, how do you indicate that you love the Lord? By following God's commandments. By following his commandments. Any other way? Obeying him. Obeying him, Sister Brown. Sister David, you may have to run that night. <laughs> Obeying him. Get your steps in. <laughs> By showing love to others. By showing love. Jesus says, they will know that you are my disciples by the love you have one to the other. They will know that you are my disciples. They will know that you are my disciples by the love you have for one another. So people know that you are Jesus' disciples. He knows that you are loving people by the way you love people and in the love you have one to the other. Yes? yes? Mm -hmm. He says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Throughout the Old Testament, God expressed his love he expressed his love for people. God expressed his love for human beings. Throughout the Old Testament, God expressed his love for people. In other words, planes can fall out the air all day long as long as human life is not. The only reason we really get disturbed other than the guy that owns the plane, the only reason we really get disturbed when a plane crashes is because there, there are human lives on board. <laughs> Planes could fall out the sky every day, all day, as long as it doesn't crash and kill somebody on the ground or crash and kill somebody on board. <laughs> Even the worst of human beings are concerned when a plane falls and human life is on board. Even the worst of human beings, the worst of them, jokers that just don't have good sense, they're even concerned. They are concerned when human life is on, on board. And you don't have to tell them to be concerned. People are concerned when human life is becoming tragic. It's only a tragedy because human life is on board. So the God we serve is a God who is concerned about people. If God is concerned about people, then we ought to be concerned about people. If God loves people, then we ought to love people. He says God took several opportunities to express his love for people. He always expressed his love. Throughout the Old Testament, he expressed. And the essence of the New Testament is the same. What same? Throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament, he's expressing his love for people. God is just expressing his love for human beings. 
Throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, he's expressing himself. Jesus quotes this same, these same verses when he's talking. Jesus says the same thing. You ought to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might or with all your mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Jesus comes back and he talks scripture. He talks Old Testament scripture so that we can hear what he believes in the New Testament. Jesus is speaking and Jesus is saying to us, whatever you do, love God. Everything in your Christian life, everything about you knowing him and every ex every ex in experiencing him, everything about him or about God, everything about his will depends on the quality of your love relationship with God. He covers it all. He says everything about God's will, everything about you has to round up to God's love for you and your love relationship you have with God. If that's not settled, Nothing in your life will be right. If you don't come to the conclusion that you love God and that God loves you, nothing in your life will be right. Oh, you can be successful. You can be. You can get. You can get employee of the money every month. But deep down in your heart, there's a void in you, and it's shaped like God. A new car won't fix it. A new person won't fix it. A new house won't fix it. It looks like more money won't fix it. It's a void in us and that void is shaped just like God. And it doesn't matter what you try to get to substitute to make you feel better. Nothing can help you other than God. We got to love God. We got to have a love relationship with him. A relationship with him where he knows us and we know him. Amen. Really, we have to fellowship with him. So how do we keep in touch with God? How do we fellowship with God? How do we get to know God? How do we do that? How do we get to know God better tomorrow than we knew him today? Study his word. Study his word. Sister Brown, you got it right on the tip of your tongue. I can see. How do we know him? By spending time. By spending time with him. By spending time. How do we spend time with him? Through his word, through prayer, through meditation, through talking to him and allowing him to talk to us. We got to get to know God, y'all. And we have to love him in such a way that uh, we know him and he knows us. We're going to go through a, 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 a group of scriptures here. And Sister, Sister Brown, since you have the microphone, we'll start with you. If you take the first one, it's uh, Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. We're going to read it straight from the book, Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. And this is the assignment. Circle everything that's associated with love in every place that it lists love or in some form. Let me make myself clear. Every scripture we read for the rest of the night, we're going to circle in that scripture everywhere in these it says love or loved one or loved or loved in. Everywhere God identifies love, I want you to identify love by serving. If you're writing your book, you won't go to hell. If you're writing your Bible, you won't go to hell. So the scripture is Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20 in the Old Testament, and it's Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. So Sister Brown's going to read that one, and she's going to give us where love is identified, and then the rest of it, we're going to pass our mic around and, until we get to the end on page 54. Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. 
Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Love the Lord your God, obey him, and remain faithful to him, for he is your life. Deuteronomy 13, 19, and 20. Okay, tell us where this word is, or words. I look at life, uh, blessing, live, love, obey, remain faithful. That's the whole verse, Sister Brown. <laughs> so in other words, God, God wants us to obey him and show our love toward him, right? In this assignment, we want to circle the word, that one word that we read across that says love, love, da, love, in, love, may, love, make. Wherever there is a word love, try that for us, Sister Brown. Give it to me. You found you found that word. Which love. one is it? Love. Love. Where is it found? Read the love. Read the read the uh, sentence that is in. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Love the Lord your God. Obey Him and remain faithful to Him. Amen. Amen. So the word is love, right? Yeah. Who's next? But Miles, you, you have John 3.16. John 3.16. We're looking for what word? Love. Now some form of love. John 3.16. God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. And the word is loved. God loved the world in this way. God loved the world, right? Now let's compare the two verses. Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20 is instructions to mankind. Yes? Live and love, right? So he instructs mankind to love. Love the Lord your God. But look at John 3, 16. Who, who is the, who's doing the action here? Who's presenting the action? God is. It says, God loved. In the first verse, Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20, it tells us that we got to love. When you love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, you have the ability to love even when you're in unlovable situations. Then he says, he reminds us, God loved the world. God loved how many people? Everybody. Everybody. God loved the world. Who's next? Sister Darrington. John 14, 21. John 14, 21. John 14 and 21. The one who has my commands and keep them is the one who loves me and will be the one who loves me, will be the love and will be loved by, by my father. I also will love him and will reveal myself to him. John 14 and 21 says. John 14 and 21. You just read it. We're reading it straight from the book. Okay. You just read it. So now you want to identify the forms of love, and you're going to circle that for me, the forms of love in your book or in your Bible. Where's uh, the first the one? The one who loves, one who loves God, me, and... Okay. You missed one. Back up to the first okay. sentence. Okay. First sentence. The one who has my commands and keep them and the one who loves me. He's, he's the one who loves me. Now, who, who's, who's presenting the action here? 
the one who loves me. Man. So mankind is loving God. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Mankind is loving God. Okay, go to the next sentence. And the one who loves me will be loved by, far, by my father. Okay, look at this. And the one who loves me, the human being that loves Jesus Christ, the human being that loves God, the human being who loves me, will be loved by the Father. Jesus is saying, the one who loves me, God don't love you. Mm -hmm. What's the next one? Also, and also, I, I also would love him and will reveal myself to him. Look at what he says. John chapter 14, verse 21. He says, and finally, Jesus speaking, right? Jesus says, I also will love him. The Father loved him. Now, I will also love him. And then I'm going to reveal myself unto him. Yes? Yeah. So when he says that when you love God, God in turn loves you. But the fact of the matter is, God loves you in spite of you. God loves you before you love God. And because God loved you, that's why you're loving him. So Sir Davis proudly says, when I ask why you love me, true, girl, you love me. <laughs> what that says, Brother Miles, if I didn't love her, <laughs> love will flee from the house. <laughs> she says, she loved me because I first loved her. But God is saying, you love me. God is saying, you love me because I first loved you. God loves us first. And because God loves us, we love God. Jesus comes back later on and Jesus said, not only should you love those that love you, that's the least you can do. He says, you got to love those who despitefully use you. Those who falsely accuse you. Those who mess over you. You got to still love them. My, my. You got to still love them. You can't hate them. You got to love them. And when you love somebody, you pray for them, right? That's right. And you don't pray God kill them. <laughs> you pray God bless them. Bless their household. Bless their family. Bless their finances. Bless them to walk with you, God. Bless them in a way that nobody else can bless them, God. Bless their children to be blessed going in and coming out. I'm talking about praying for your enemies. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, you ain't done nothing. Ooh, that's terrible. Jesus says, you haven't done anything mm -hmm. if you just love folk that love you. Mm -hmm. If you just love people who treat you right. Jesus says you got to love your enemies. Love my enemies. My, my, my. Jesus says to us, God loves us. We are loved by God. Jesus says, and he also loves us, and he will reveal himself to us. Good test question. Good test question. Good test question. Can someone who's not born again love God? Yeah. Can one who have not been saved, can they really, really love God? Anybody going to pass the test? I think they can. So they have to pass the mic up here please. Can someone who's not saved <laughs> love God? Yes. Okay. I do believe they can. And I believe that they believe that they are already in love with God. Because they'll compare you as a Christian. Nope, they're not like us. And they're not even born again. And you already know they're not born again. Okay. And they just put themselves on that level before even recognizing. You got a mic in your hand. Even recognizing that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they don't even read the Bible. 
But so are you saying they can or they can't? I say they can. Okay, they can love the Lord without being saved, okay? Good yeah. test the question. Anybody else? Yeah. Sister David Davis, can you run that mic back there? So David Davis, why don't you come up here so you can get the So the question is, can one love the Lord without being saved? It's a homework assignment, test yeah. question. Mm -hmm. So let's hash it out. Mm -hmm. Can somebody really love the Lord? Yes, mm -hmm. they're not born again. I think they can, but I think they're going to make more mistakes because they're not, if they're not born again, then they're not fully aware of the relationship, what the relationship is supposed to be. See. I mean, they might feel like, you know, I'm, I love God and I'm worshiping him in a way. But if they're saved, they're going to be doing whatever they can, whatever the Bible says. But they may just be, as they say, living right. So okay, the first part of the homework, Simon, is can a person love the Lord without being saved? The second part of the homework, Simon, is define the three degrees of a man. The natural, the carnal, and the spiritual. The natural, the carnal, and the spiritual. The natural man, the carnal man, and the spiritual man. I know two people here already got this. Oh, I got that back in the 80s. The natural, the carnal, and the spiritual. It was driven into us when it says, but it was driven into us. What are the three degrees? The natural, the corner, and the spiritual. What are the differences in a natural man, a carnal man, and a spiritual man? What are the differences? What are the differences? Are there differences? Yes, there are differences. So what's the first homework assignment, Sister Davis Davis? What's the first homework assignment? Can someone who isn't saved love God? Can someone who's not saved love God? What's the second part of that assignment? Define the three degrees of man, natural man, carnal man, and spiritual. Okay, what are the three degrees? The natural man, the carnal man, and the spiritual man. And two of them can be the same person at the same time. Right, Brother Miles? Two of them can be the same can reside in the same person at the same time, but at different moments. <laughs> look at how you look at it. Look at you. Who's next? Who's next? Sister Davis, you gotta share a book with Sister, Sister Woods here. On page 53, you're gonna be looking at Romans chapter 8, 35 through 39. Romans chapter 8, 35, 37, and 39. Right. We're going to read it straight from the book. Right here. Straight from the book. Right. When you stand and read that for us, we're looking to circle everywhere there's love. Everywhere there's love or some form of love. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction and distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword. No, in all these words, we are, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, nor height, nor death, nor any other creative thing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So here we look at everywhere there is love or some form of love that we're circling, circling, right? Mm -hmm. So where's the first one? The first sentence, uh, love of Christ. From the love of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first love, okay? Who can separate for us from the love of Christ? Who's performing the action? Who owns the love? Christ, right? So this is Christ's love. It is Christ's love. And so 
Who can separate us from the love of Christ? This is a question. No. The Apostle Paul is asking a question. Who can separate us no. from this love that Christ has for us? No. Okay, where's the next love? Uh, awesome. Who loves us on the third line? Third line. In the we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Who is the one who loved us? We're talking about the love of Christ. So Christ loved us. Jesus loved us. Who's performing the action? Christ is. Christ is loving us. In this particular passage, we're not loving Christ. Christ is loving us. Now, were we here before Christ or Christ here before us? So who loved who first? Christ loved us before we loved Christ. So he, he, he made us more than conquerors through the love that he has for us. Where's the next love? The next to the last where it says um, separate us from the love of God. Who will separate us from the love of God? Not height, nor depth, not things to come, not things that, that have been, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Who's the action here? Who's performing the action? God is. So Christ is loving us. He's loving us in spite of us because we ain't decent enough to love. <laughs> There's a song out there that says, he thought enough of me to save me. How'd you go? Know? He thought I was worth saving. He thought I was worth saving. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you notice, you weren't worth saving. <laughs> None of us were worth saving. That's why we don't sing that song at New Begin. <laughs> None of us was worth saving. Now one. The only thing that made us worthy is the fact that Christ resides in us. The Bible says that Christ took upon himself our sins and made us worthy. At our very best, we are nothing more than filthy rags. But now that Christ has saved us, now we are worthy. The Bible says he imputed, he imputed, he imputed righteousness in us. We weren't even righteous. I don't care how good you were with your parents. You were not righteous. None of us was worth saving. When he saved us, he made us righteous. He imputed righteousness in us. Paul says that nothing can separate us from this love of God. Not anything. He says, no, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Through Christ. We like to sing that song. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And then he died. And then he died. That's love. That's love. But that's not how. The story ends. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. Now, that's a good song to sing. That's love. Tina Turner want to know what love got to do with it? <laughs> Tell Tina love got a lot to do with it. Love has a lot to do with it. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. On the cross he died. But that's not how the story ends. Three days later he rose again. That's love. Christ demonstrated his love for us. God demonstrated his love for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, while we were yet doing our own thing, while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. That's love. Who got number next? She's number next. Bottom of the page. 1 John 3.16. 1 John 
First John three sixteen. The month of the month is says four four. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. First uh, John three and sixteen. Where is love? Where is love? Oh, this is how we come to know love. This is how we come to know love. How do we come to know love? Because he laid down his life for us. That's love. If Jesus didn't love us, he never would have given his life for us. If we were worth saving, he wouldn't have to save us. If we were worth saving, then he wouldn't have to lay down his life for us. But God knew we weren't worth it, and Jesus came and made us worth it. He made us who we are. He, he paid the price for us. What was the price that Jesus paid for us? He gave his very life. Look at what he says. First John chapter 3, verse 3, verse 16, brother. First John chapter 3, verse 16 says, This is how we come to know love. We wouldn't even know love. Besides from the fact that Jesus taught us love and gave us love. This is how we get to love. This is how we get to know love. The fact that Jesus Christ gave his life and showed us his love. Question or comments? He loves us. And check this out. Not only did he love us, he still loves us. We didn't know what love was about until we followed in the, in the, in the sink with Jesus. We have to fall in sync with Jesus. In other words, you got to get to know Jesus in order to know God's love and Jesus' love for you. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 10 and verse number 19. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 10 and verse 19. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We love because he first loved us. First John 4, 9 through 10 and 19. First John 4, 9 through 10, verse 19. Where are the listings of love? You got God's love. God's love, verse, first, first, first line. line. Yes. And in the second line, you've got love consists in this. It's telling you that. And then, yeah. not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And then the last line, we love because he first loved. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we love because God first loved us. I mean, so today we really read that one. Yeah. <laughs> it says that we love because God loved us. And because God loves us, we now have the ability to love. Because God loved us first, now we are able to love. The homework assignment. Sister Davis Davis, what's the first part of the homework assignment? Can someone who isn't saved love God? Can someone who isn't saved love God? What's the second part of the homework assignment? Define the three degrees of man. Define the three degrees of man. What are they? Natural man, Natural. carnal man, spiritual man. Natural, carnal man, and spiritual man. Okay. Okay, so that's the homework assignment. Look at, look at this verse. Look at what it says. He says, God's love was revealed among us in this way. He's going to tell us how God revealed his love. Then he says, God sent his only 
his one and only son into the world. Now this one and only son is his only unique son. His one of a kind son. Same word that is used in, in John 3, 16. God sent his only begotten son, his only one of a kind son. God sent him. That is love. His only, God sent his one and only son into the world so that the world through him might live. That the world might live through him. That the world can have a living through his son. The third part of that question, homework seven, is can we really live without Jesus Christ? Can we really, really, really experience life without Jesus Christ? Can we really experience life without him? When you see guys sitting on the side of the curb, just talking, some writer says, sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away. Are they really living? Are they being productive? Are they just resting? They, they retired now, so they're just resting. Right? Damn, they might be. This is what retired people say before they retire. This is what retired people say. Mm -hmm. I am going to retire. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, the way I want to do it, how I want to do it, any time I want to do it. When I don't want to do it, I ain't going to do it. Yep, how is it working for you? Mm -hmm. One, two. Is that working for anybody in this room? Such a brown. Ain't working for you. Such a red chart isn't working for you. Okay? Such a day isn't working for you. Yes, it is. It is. I see. I see. Okay, the next question. Since you retired, are you working harder than you were when you were working? Yes. Long hours? Oh, yes. Long hours. My next question. <laughs> Since you retired, can people find something for you to do? Yes, oh, yes. Oh, man, this is unanimous. <laughs> they have come to the conclusion that you don't have anything to do and it's their right. responsibility to show you what to do with your life. That's right, that's right. And because you love them, mm -hmm. you do it anyway. Yes. That's love. That's love. He's kicking and screaming. <laughs> so, he says, he gave his only begotten son, one and only unique son, he shows us love. And not only did he show us love, he sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice. In other words, here we are again. He's correcting us from our sins. He is atoning us, meaning to set at one, to set straight again. In other words, Jesus pays the price for us. When we wasn't worth saving, he saved us. Boy, that song sounds so good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What song is that? Something I just said. Oh. We were worth saving. Oh. It sounds good. People shout out it. But I just want to tell you, I wasn't worth it. And now... Who I am today is because Jesus has made me who I am. Amen. Because I didn't do anything to save me. Mm -hmm. And if I had had it my way, I'd still be doing what I used to do. Mm -hmm. But the Apostle Paul says, when a man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Or creation. All things are moving away. That word in the Greek means to be, be slowly moving away. Meaning you get rid of your sins slowly. 
It means that you turn your life over to Christ and he makes a difference in your life. And everybody is at a different rate. Some people are able to stop it just like that. Others are able to take two, three months to stop. Others are able to say, look, pray me through this thing. Regardless of where you are in your walk, God loves you and he loves you unconditionally. So that makes his type of love what type of love? Agape type of love. God loves us unconditionally. There are questions. Number six gives us questions. Using the preceding verses, answer the following question. A, who is life? It didn't say what is life. It says, who is life? Number one, the answer to A, the only answer, the Lord is your life. My first question is, can a person really love the Lord without being saved? Number B, letter B, in what ways has God demonstrated his love to you? B, he has drawn you to himself. He sent his only son to provide eternal life for you. Jesus laid down his life for you. God demonstrated his love toward us in that Jesus demonstrated his love by laying down his life. God demonstrated his love. Jesus demonstrated his love. God gave the son and the son gave his life. Just for you. See, how can you show your love for him? The text says, choose life. Listen to God's voice. Choose life. The first question is, can a person really love the Lord? He says, choose life. Listen to God's voice. Hold fast to him. Believe in his only son. Obey his commands and teachings. Be willing to lay down your life for your brother. God was doing good. He telling us obey him. God, you were doing just fine. You told us to give. God, you were doing just fine. You said to obey your commandments and your teaching. You said to hold fast to God. You said to believe in his only son. You said to listen and obey his voice. And then you messed it up, God, when you said, lay down my life for another man, another woman. Lay down our lives. He says, Jesus has laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our fellow man. That's love. Thank you. That is love. My question is, where are we now? Third question? The fourth question? The fourth question is, can someone really lay down their lives without being saved for somebody else without being saved? That happens every day. A guy walks into a place with he's strapped down with bombs, he gives his life. Uh, through suicide, being a suicide bomber, he pulls the pin or takes his hand off the pin or he, and, or he ignited with a phone or some device. He gives his life for Allah. He gives his life for some false doctrine. And he's not saved. People give their lives for stuff all day and not be saved. We give our lives every day for, you know, we give our time. We give our circumstances every day for other people. Yep. Has nothing to do with salvation. Okay. D, what does God promise to do in response to your loving him? You and your children will be under his blessings. By believing in Jesus, you have eternal life. The Father will love you. 
God will come to make his home in you and with you. He will make you more than a conqueror over the difficulties of your life. You will never be separated from his love. God has promised us that we, he will never separate himself from us. And he will never separate his love from us. Paul lists this whole thing of, of issues and he tells us that these issues will not separate us from God's love. He says not even height, nor death, nor things to come, not things in the past, not things in the future, not things in the present. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. God just loves us. And he, who loved first, you or God? How you know? Let's look at it. It says, God loved you first, because God is love. 1 John 4, 16. His very nature is love. What is the one thing that God wants you to do? He wants you to love him with all your being. All your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, with all your might, God wants you to love him. Your experience in God depends on your having this love relationship with God. Your relationship with God makes a difference. When you love God, you can go through some things that you normally wouldn't be able to go through. This is an important factor in our lives. Jesus gave his life because he loved us. And he's still calling men, women, boys, and girls to get to know him. That's why he died on a tree. That's why when they buried him, he wasn't concerned. And that's why earlier that third day morning, he rose from the dead. He did it for you. The door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is extended. You got to have an opportunity to get to know Jesus. That's why every time a preacher preaches here, he talks about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's why whenever a teacher teaches here, he or she talks about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And it's because of his death, burial, and resurrection that we can get to know Jesus. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, you can do that right now. So bow your head with me for a moment. Repeat this simple prayer and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for your sins, for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly pray this prayer, believing in the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you are born again. We say to you, join a good Bible teaching church where Jesus is the center of attention and the reign of church. I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. If you want to join our church, you can do so locally or globally. We welcome you to the New Beginning Church. We're located at 4251 Shiramai Road. That's 4251 Shiramai Road. Shiramai is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R. 4251 Shiramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77. 
0-4-8. Thank you for joining us. Please, please join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Join us at 10.30 a.m. for worship service. And continue to join us every Wednesday night at 7.15 for Bible study. It is offering time. It is offering time. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you want to give electronically, you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he draws all men unto himself. If you want to mail in your gift, you can mail it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Please remember, please remember to keep uh, Brother Miles and his family in prayer. Keep Brother Miles and his family in prayer in these moments of bereavement. Let me say thank you for all of you for your participation in the Family and Friends Day. Thank you for inviting people. We want to continue to invite them to come until they become a part of the body. Thank you for serving our guests and being hospitable to them. Thank you so much for being a part of the great celebration on Sunday morning. I like to see this church like this every Sunday, but it can only get that way if you invite people to come, hold them accountable, pray with them, create a loving relationship with them, and as you create a loving relationship with them, then and only then will they see Christ through you. Amen. Jesus says that they will know that you are his disciples by your love one to the other. Amen. So thank you so much for serving. Please remember, please remember this Sunday morning, this Sunday morning, October the 6th, 2024, we will be meeting at 10.15 a.m. 10.15 a.m. No, this is not an ongoing thing unless you just love it that way. But we will be meeting at 10.15 this Sunday morning. 10.15. What time? 10.15 Sunday morning. We'll be meeting at 10.15. If you used to get in here late, right around 11 o'clock, communion probably be over by the time you get here. So 10.15. The choir will be singing at 1015. The cameras will be rolling at 1015. The online group will be on there at 1015. We'll meet at 1015 on Sunday morning, October 6th, 2024. Amen? 1015. 1015. What time? 1015. 1015 on Sunday morning. Please remember October 19th, October 19th, Sister Woods and Sister Davis will be taking your registration for October 19th. My Mental Health Matters. We're going to have a seminar on our mental health. You, can, you don't have to be considered mentally crazy or anything. It's just to give us information and knowledge that we can take to others and we can do, use it for ourselves. We will deal with trauma. We will deal with childhood trauma. We will deal with generational curses. We will also deal with the fact that life is important to us. And sometimes it just gets crazy in our head and in our heart. Yes, it just gets crazy sometimes. And we want to deal with all those things right here at the church. That's Saturday, October the 19th. Please put it on your calendar on Saturday, October the 19th at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. We do need people who want to serve that day and want to be hospitable to our guests as they come. So please sign up with Sister Nicole Davis and Sister Cora Woods. Amen? Amen. Thank God. On Monday, Monday, this Monday at 7 o'clock, we will be having a uh, Zoom meeting to do a debriefing for our family and friends day. All of you are invited to come and take a part so we can see what we did and see what we can do better. Amen? Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Are there any prayer requests or praise reports? Prayer requests or praise reports? Prayer requests. Yes, ma'am. Prayer requests or praise reports. Good evening. Good evening. I am um, asking for prayer for the Daly family. 
Pastor Deli passed yesterday. So um, maybe you can pull that back. Okay, what's the name of the church? Faith Missionary Baptist. We want to pray for Faith Missionary Baptist Church and the Dairy family and that church family. Amen. We want to lift that church, Pastor Daly, family, his family, and his church. Uh, Faith Missionary Baptist Church. We want to lift him before the Lord, sir. We want to lift him before the Lord. Why don't you stand for the distance? Father God, we thank you now, we honor you. God, we thank you for who you are, for what you do. Lord, we pray for the daily family. We pray that you bless them in time of bereavement. We pray for the Faith Missionary Church. We ask you to strengthen them in times like these. Lord, we ask you to bless them as only you can. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for what you are doing. We ask you to bless them and know that you know what's best. We pray for the Miles family, Father God. We ask you to continue to strengthen them in this time of the reading. Lord, we ask you to continue to comfort the church at large. Bless our church to continue to be a beacon light that shines bright in a dark and dismal world. We ask you to bless us, Father God, in our going, bless us in our coming. Bless the choirs that come tonight to sing unto you. Bless them, Father God, to not rehearse, but to sing unto you with power and with glory. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We are united in church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed.